I'm not a pilot, I do make mistakes. The information provided in these tutorials is only to get you guys up in the virtual sky. None of it is accurate enough for real world application. Welcome back. So, what we're going to do now is go into instant action. We're going to pick the Mustang trainer and we're going to do hot start from Batumi. So a hot start means that the engine's running everything set up ready for us to go. This can sometimes be a little bit more difficult uh, than a cold start, but cold starts are a little bit complex. We'll go into them later. Uh, what we'll do after we hit fly is immediately go into adjust controls. Now from here you can also search, but to begin with, go into axis assign. Make sure that your pitch and roll are set correctly. Sometimes if you've got extra equipment, like I've got a rudder here, sometimes DCS will flood that with stuff that you don't need. So your pitch will be controlled by your rudder, which you really don't want. So make sure that's all nice and clear. Now, if you're actually following along, which may be a little bit difficult if you don't have rudder pedals, uh, engine RPM setting, you are going to require that for this aircraft. Flaps, that's required for pretty much all aircraft. Uh, pitch, roll, throttle, uh, rudder is definitely needed for this one. Uh, wheel brake left and wheel brake right. However, you can get away with just having a plain old wheel brake. The other one that you need as well is landing gear. Sometimes what happens is um, naming conventions don't always span across all of the aircraft so you might have to search for some of these now these do work on the keyboard as well as you can see you've got a landing gear down or a landing gear up or a landing gear toggle now i've just set that to uh, the uh, pinky switch on mine uh, i think that's called the pinky switch but it's the little lever uh, on the warthog so you're going to need landing gear as well. So with those put in, uh, they're the major ones that you need to begin with. Now the hot starts, they can be a little bit difficult. It might take you a few goes to get this right, uh, especially if you're very new. Uh, you want to apply the brakes straight away and adjust your throttle and engine RPM setting. So we're not going to go into too much detail as to what they actually do. Uh, throttle really just controls the the amount of fuel that's going into the engine and the RPM setting is the pitch uh, of the props on the engine. So what we're going to do, uh, we're just going to demonstrate how powerful the Mustang is. Rudder pedals are very um, soft on this and you usually have to use the brakes for turning but if you apply the brakes too hard, your prop dies. Okay, so after that little mishap, we're going to have another go at it. So what we're going to do, we're going to apply the brakes and we're going to hit fly. So we're not going to worry too much about the instruments. They will come into it later. All you need to know is really when you're flying, having these in the green is good. Uh, you can overpower the engine and underpower the engine uh, for a certain period of time, but you can't overpower it all the time. The engine will seize. So try and keep those in the green and you'll be fine. Uh, red lines are bad, green lines are good. So what we're going to do, the rudder is very soft which kind of helps with takeoff because this thing is very responsive. Now there are things like changing the, like turning the rudder to five degrees and there's a little bit of a procedure to take off with this to make it easier but we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to take off and get up in the air. So since you know what flaps are now, we're going to put the flaps all the way down. See, this is uh, the flaps on the Mustang. So we're going to put them all the way down. They do take a little while to respond and you're going to need to know where the landing gear is because when we take off we're going to do gear up and flaps up and we're going to go over that way, over that taxiway and you'll notice that it's not the best viewing in the Mustang. So sometimes you'll need to take note in certain aircraft and make reference points from the cockpit. So I call this little thing the horn. I don't know whether it's the horn or not. Um, but I use that as a reference point for when I'm landing uh, just so I know what angle I'm at and that kind of thing. Sometimes you'll need to do that in some aircraft. And we can keep those uh, needles out of the green for now because it doesn't really matter too much. You can get joysticks that will um, twist 
and you can use rudder for that but eventually you're going to want rudder pedals because that will make life easier for everyone involved and as you noticed before uh, when we were setting up the buttons you can see that there's multiple buttons and multiple options and that's good for different equipment uh, if you want to set switches or anything like that uh, you have multiple options and that does work for sim pit building if you wanted to build uh, a sim pit now don't be too embarrassed if you end up doing a 360 if you apply the brakes too much because um, this aircraft will spin around quite easily now I'm going to be very cautious with this because it's a tutorial video and I don't really want to screw it up uh, but me being me I probably will and there's nothing wrong with that they're just happy mistakes because we're all learning don't be too nervous all right, power down again apply both brakes but we don't want to apply them too hard because remember what happened last time we broke the prop so what we're going to do we're going to power up but we're not going to do it too fast and it doesn't matter like I said we can stay out of the bounds of these green lines for a little bit uh, we just got to make sure that we put them put those needles back into the green line when we're ready to go so we're going to pitch uh, use the RPM lever that little P lever there and we're going to push that up all the way up and the engine's not happy but we don't worry and we're going to throttle up release the brakes now you're going to need to apply right rudder because this thing will slide to the left and we'll get into that in a little bit and as you can see the nose down is happening and that nose down means that we're getting lift and we're gonna take off very sloppy takeoff but we're gonna take off because this thing does like to roll around a bit alright now I'm gonna pull the pitch RPM lever back a little bit and I'm gonna pull the throttle back a little bit just to get that in the green now that we're up in the air and we're going to do flaps up and gear up and when the gear goes up you'll see that little red light come on when that red light goes away that means that uh, the gear is up and locked excellent now the reason why the manual or takeoff instructions include setting the rudder to five degrees right is because of the torque of the engine so there's a lot of forces going on when you're taking off so we're just going to discuss really what matters to you in a flight sim situation but all the aircraft are different and these are something they're, they're little variables that you'll need to check with each aircraft uh, takeoff instructions are different startups are different but there's something uh, there's a few variables that really are just uniform across the board now one of them is takeoff distance takeoff speed takeoff weights uh, and well takeoff forces if we're talking about World War II uh, aircrafts with props because the torque on the engine uh, will actually force a twist uh, in the aircraft so if you just watch the horizon and I'm just going to throttle up quickly you see there's a little bit of a yaw moment it's more pronounced uh, in the uh, P-51 fighter the trainer is not as gutsy as the P-51 fighter but uh, when you power up or power down you'll actually see a yaw moment uh, happen uh, with the nose of the aircraft and that is the engine torque fighting against the other forces so that's a little bit different when it comes to the Cold War era modern aircraft with a jet engine. Uh, the pretty much the only forces you're going to get are out the rear. But when it comes to uh, prop engines, there are other forces involved. Okay, so to kind of drive home what I'm talking about, we're in the A10C now so we've moved up to a Cold War era aircraft now the buttons that we need are flaps and we're going to put the flaps all the way down for takeoff we need to know where the landing gear up and down button is 
Now we're not going to need to fight against the torque of the engine because we've got jet engines this time so we don't need to use rudder. However the variables that all these aircraft share, now they're different with each aircraft but they all share the same th variables that you need to be aware of in order to perform the best. Now you don't really need to know these um, spot on you can do that if you like but I know that the A10 does like to produce lift when taking off at 160 knots now the same thing is going to be the same it's going to be the same thing for the Mustang it's got a particular speed where it produces lift where it, where it likes it um, now we're just going to take off from here and when we get up in the air same thing gear up flaps up uh, there is an extra step in here with the nose wheel steering but we're not going to worry about that now we're just talking about basic concepts and the, and the types of details you will need to keep an eye on so we're going to throttle up brakes are already off just going to use the rudder pedal to adjust our um, position on the runway which this is actually quite sensitive it's a lot sensitive than I remember it being and we're just going to watch the speed there now I've had to switch nose wheel steering off um, so we can use the rudder. Now you'll see that this will start to want to lift off at about 160. It's around here somewhere. I don't know it exactly. So now we're up. Flaps up. Gear up. And that's it. So basically I've used the same or similar technique to take off in the Mustang that I've used to take off in the A10. The variables that you need to be aware of is distance, weight and speed really. How long does it take for you to get off the ground? What's the speed where you're going to start producing lift? What is the maximum weight that I can take off with? Do I need to add extra flaps? Do I not? And that's universal across the board. Another thing uh, that will affect, but it won't affect that much until you start getting into the nitty gritty, is weather conditions. Weather conditions do actually change lift. Uh, Muck speed also changes with weather as well, so that's the speed of sound. Um, those slight changes uh, in the atmosphere do make a difference when flying. Uh, that has to do with uh, the pressure and when you fly missions you'll see that uh, there's a little part in the brief that says uh, you know however many hectopascals or inches in mercury um, that kind of thing so flaps down full throttle one seventy around about again flaps up, gear up, which I've forgotten what the button is, so we'll just click on it, and there you go, same technique again, we're up in the air. So as mentioned before, weather does affect takeoff speeds, takeoff distances, um, if you like you can do further reading, uh, you can look at commercial aircraft, there's V1 speeds, V2 speeds, V-rotate speeds um, and that will give you a further instruction on what I'm talking about but for those who just want to uh, hop in and you're not too concerned flaps down full throttle it'll take off when it wants to take off it's going to be affected by weight it's going to be affected by your flaps uh, when you take off you want your flaps and your gear up because that will reduce the drag when you've got extra things hanging out of your aircraft that increases drag um, it affects the aerodynamics of the aircraft which it is simulated in this so you need to be aware of that uh, it will slow down your aircraft it'll make it behave not how it should behave uh, and uh, make sure that you put the flaps down and the gear out when you're landing so thanks for watching, that's the end of episode 2, hopefully you found this uh, 
bite-sized chunk um, good enough to get you up in the air. Thanks for watching.